Rose is not too far away from where I'm living at the moment so I thought it's only one hour by train so I thought I can just hop on the train and then take one day break in West Rose I did my own research before I actually going I did it on my way so I heard this is the fifth largest city in Sweden and also it's one of the ugly city I don't know why but let's find out I suppose so my first stop is the open air museum it's not too far away from city center in Vestros but it, it takes around maybe 35 um, minutes walking I'm halfway to it but I'm a little bit tired so yeah let's see what we can find out there because I heard it's very very popular and it keeps all the old stuff in ancient times to show people like what was the, the life there before so let's see what we can find out This is the whole thing, but oh, here they have English, so that is very nice. So basically, I think this is just an open air museum that you show people the environment in old Asian times about, like, for example, like farms, plants, crops, and blacksmith and how they lived in in their own times. So that's very nice. Yeah, let's go check it out. Oh, by the way. This one is for free, so let's go. That's the special gold, I think. And then you can get milk out of it if you see there. Oh my god, I saw them. There. times but compared to this I think I still love the British one but this is also nice I found this one in Stockholm as well that you can go see close it This is the place that the kids could plant their own stuff. So you see here, this is the old kids before, and then they have their name on this one. So you can plant some flowers and plants and grand, uh, fruit or something like that. That's very nice. behind the tree because I think it's quite interesting so it's a willow tree and the man and who came here a long time ago to Westeros for a seasonal walk and after he finished the walk and he wanted to travel back to his hometown and he picked one of the tree branches and make it into a walking stick and then go back to Dalarna and his hometown and then when he arrived his hometown, he just stick to the ground and just leave it. And then the stick started to grow and rooted and became a willow tree. So that was the first willow tree in Dalarna, in that region. So that's quite interesting story. 
and I, I, I don't I don't think there's so many similar stories but it's quite interesting to hear. Okay, now I'm here in the museum. I have to lower my voice, but I feel like this museum is for kids because everything is so kids friendly. And then they can you can see different kinds of parts of the history of this city. How cute is this? I used to have one of this when I was a kid but it was really really fun to play with it but nowadays people don't really use it so it's kind of shame but it's good to keep it and for kids to see like this is the early version of the keyboard or the printer here everything is so kids friendly and one thing I really enjoy this museum is that they can provide a lot of samples that kids can can touch, can play, they can try and then they can see what actual people used in the past. So that is very interesting for me because I've been to many many museums and I barely can touch anything because you everything's sealed behind the glass and then you're not even um, allowed to get closer. But this one is completely different. They encourage you to go back to the old times and to feel what exactly people felt and lived in their times. That is very nice. quiet uh, because I think they just opened so there wasn't a lot of people but now it's just only me having this whole area <laughs> town called Schöckbecken, if I pronounce it correctly. And this is like an old town, very old town that reserved for now. Everything was built by, by wood. Um, yeah, this is one of the oldest town in Sweden. And after the Second World War, everything, like they built new buildings and stuff, but they still keep this little area, like with historical buildings and stuff. This is quite in the center of the city and there's so many high buildings and around it but when you come here it's so quiet and yeah, so calm. I, I think I arrived at my last destination but it is quite out of uh, my expectation because oh, I understand because it's winter so it's like a garden and this garden is provided to the, uh, the high school students who can come and plant uh, their own plants I think like flowers and stuff but now it's winter there's nothing left but snow I'll show you there's nothing only like a snow 
Yeah, and by the way, I want to mention that the high school is the first high school in Sweden. I don't know how to pronounce that name, it's a long name. I'll put under here, I'll put it on the screen just in case. But it's really, really nice, the school that they can provide this garden for the students to, to plant something that they are interested in, where they're working, or where they want to study. So that's, that's very nice. So, yeah, that's basically for, for me, for today. <laughs> um, yeah, I spent like four or five hours here. I've been to several places. Um, I quite enjoy it here and I find it very, very interesting because people always say like it's a boring city and also some of my Swedish friends told me like ah, don't go there, it doesn't worth the time. But I think I quite enjoy it here. This town is tiny and it's calm but it's full of all the history I can feel in the air because no matter I, where I go here in the city then I feel like people try to reserve and try to preserve the historical stuff from ancient times so I think that's very very good especially there's so many immigrants in, um, in Sweden so it's very good to show people like who this country really is so that's very important so that's enough for me for this video and yeah, if you want to see any place in Sweden then just comment down below and let me know. I will try my best to go. I love traveling anyways. So I will see you in the next video.